points. So let's jump straight into it. In its simplest form, or as the name kind of suggests, a stable coin is literally just a coin over here that equals to one US dollar. Think of it as a cryptocurrency coin or a crypto dollar, uh, which acts just like a real dollar, but lives on the blockchain. So uh, think of it as, yeah, I guess to say like a crypto dollar. And the reason why that we use um, stable coins is because they allow us to interact with the cryptocurrency world and allow us to rely on the simple fact that one token is always equal to one dollar. So with regular cryptocurrencies, which you may hear about, such as uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or uh, any other token that exists, they always kind of fluctuate in value continuously. And this means that it becomes a really big problem for when you want to send, because value keeps changing, storing, uh, because what one token is today could be something else tomorrow, uh, and, um, yeah, like, it's kind of like this whole issue with volatility. So, a lot of these stable coins, they can exist, uh, as coins on a separate blockchain, but more po popularly are that there are tokens that live on the Ethereum blockchain. So you can have a stable coin uh, that lives on another blockchain altogether, but majority of the stable coins out there today exist on the Ethereum blockchain and as tokens, and these tokens are called ERC20 tokens. Don't worry if you don't understand what that means. Uh, all you kind of need to know is that uh, you have these tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, kind of like asking the more fundamental question, why would anyone do this? Well, it's actually quite simple. Transferring assets on a blockchain is basically just updating code. And the cost of updating code will always be, uh, in most times, less than, oops, uh, will be less than one dollar regardless of size so what that really means is if I wanted to send one billion dollars worth of stable coins I would usually just pay about a 10 cent fee on the ethereum blockchain compared to in real if I was Bill Gates sending a billion dollars the same thing wouldn't cost me 10 cents but probably close to a hundred thousand dollars or maybe even a million dollars because uh, of the very expensive settlement process especially if it was say transferring overseas and um, there are other kind of legal complications so the whole uh, beauty about these stable coins on a blockchain is that you can send it to anyone anywhere at a really 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 low price but not only that the fact that it's represented as a token on Ethereum gives it some very special properties, such as you can lend it out and earn interest, you can borrow against it and uh, es essentially uh, get a loan on the blockchain with your stable coins, or you can trade against it, which means that say you are buying some Ethereum, you can then trade back to US dollars to make sure your profits are guarded against the volatility, which means it's kind of like an entry and exit point. So as you can see, the fact that we have this notion of a single dollar on the blockchain gives us many, many benefits. Now, what we haven't kind of discussed are like, what are the different kinds of stable coins or what are the most popular ones out there? So at a broad category, there's two kinds of stable
stable coins. The first one is what we call our uh, custodial, and don't worry if that sounds like a scary word, I'll get into that in a bit. The second is synthetic stable coins, I will also get into that as well. Um, and there's actually, sorry, I'm thinking out loud, there's actually uh, three kinds. There's, wait, sorry, no, ignore me, there's two kinds. I'm just a bit tired right now. Um, so we've got custodial things, and really what this means is it's just a promise that whoever issued this stablecoin promises that they have one dollar in their bank. So I'm literally just a company that says, hey, I'm into this token, and trust me, I have a dollar in the bank. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. And the second is synthetic, which is, in its very, very simplest way, is saying that uh, it's backed by another currency altogether. So in my previous video, I talked about what MakerDAO is, and uh, MakerDAO is a synthetic stablecoin, meaning that there's always one dollar there's always going to be a dollar fifty worth of ethereum for every single uh synthetic us dollar in their system uh called die so i wouldn't worry too much about synthetics as they can be a bit complex to wrap your head around and it's just a variant of a stable coin uh since the most popular stable coin right now is actually custodial stable coins so there's roughly three or two big stable coins at the moment. The first is USDT. And there is, I think, right now, close to $7 billion worth of USDT issued on the blockchain. The second one is called USDC, which I think there's probably about $1.5 billion worth. These are what I define as probably the two uh, leading stablecoin currencies. Now, it's kind of funny because USDT, also known as Tether, uh, has had a very shady past where the fact that nobody actually knows if there is $7 billion in their bank accounts. In fact, at times, there's been less than $7 billion uh, in their bank account, meaning we don't actually know if one USDT equals to one real dollar. It's kind of like a mystery in the ecosystem. But because it's so popular and because everyone thinks it has value, therefore it has value. And it's just one of those things where it doesn't make sense. Like, it really doesn't. But because it's popular, it's popular. And uh, it's kind of popular in China uh, for the fact that there's, yeah, I, I don't actually know why it's popular myself, but it is the way it is. USDC, on the other hand, is uh, run by Coinbase and a company called Circle, two very uh, reputable organizations in the space. And they actually have public audits that show that every dollar in the bank does equal to a dollar. So uh, we know that if there's $1.5 billion worth of USDC circulating, there is going to be $1 billion in their bank. And they actually provide audit reports and they're a regulated US entity, et cetera, et cetera. So you can uh, trust them that there will be money in their bank accounts if you were to take your digital US dollar and tell them that you want a real US dollar. Now, the kind of tricky bit about these custodial coins, which uh, hasn't happened so far, but you always want to be aware of, is that they can take these coins away from you at any time. Essentially, the code inside these tokens has a little, uh, what we call an, an admin control, which lets them burn freeze, uh, or issue more of these tokens. So when you use these tokens, 
you're almost trusting the parties behind them. And uh, no USDT or USDC has actually been burnt, frozen, or uh, kind of taken away from a user so far, but uh, we don't know if that's going to continue to be the case in the future. But it works for now and people trust it, so uh, the merry-go-round <laughs> is going around. And for those that don't like the idea of it, that's kind of where synthetics come in, where uh, the fact that a synthetic stablecoin is backed by, say, a decentralized currency such as Ethereum, so you don't actually have to trust someone you can trust in the code. The problem with these is, is the code secure? <laughs> so really, it's uh, there's no perfect stablecoin. There's only stablecoins with different kinds of risks. And the stablecoin you use uh, exposes you to a different kind of risk. And yeah, hopefully that kind of answered uh, the outline we set out. So to summarize, stablecoin is a representation of one US dollar on the blockchain. Why are they needed? Uh, they let us transfer very large amounts or very small amounts of value to anyone, anywhere, anytime for a very low cost. What kind of stable coins are there? You've got uh, custodial and synthetics. Custodials are very popular where they have like billions of dollars in liquidity. But the downside being is that you're at the mercy of another party. You then have synthetic stable coins, which uh, are about say a hundred million dollars in liquidity. So a lot smaller um, and no one will necessarily control them. Uh, but the question which you have to think about is, is the code safe enough? As in, will this mechanism which binds one and a half dollars worth of ETH to a dollar always going to hold true? And yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoy this video about what are stable coins.